and let us all that we can to build a better future. So on BSDNC, something completely unprofessional happened. You know, uh, Joy Reid, she got a hot mic moment where it's time to start another effing war. Now, it's not me that's doing the swearing, YouTube. However, 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 I think it's important to understand the context of why we are in this situation. It's a little bit of a quandary. So before we get to these to the, to the 19 seconds of pure gold, I think it's important that we understand how we got there. So first and foremost, first and foremost, indeed. Let's go ahead and pull up this little tweet right here. Shout out to Comrade Misty. Sarcasm Stardust. She does a great show hosting her show on TNT, which is also helped out by Indie Left. Again, good, doing some great stuff there. Uh, remember when they fear mongered that Trump was an existential threat that would take us into, you guessed it, World War III? F. Joe Biden. Breaking as early as tonight, President Joe Biden will authorize U.S. military action in the Middle East. I remember seeing that tweet as I was getting ready to go to the movie theaters last night. I thought, huh, great. World War Three. Isn't that going to be fun? What 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 a great way to start my evening. So let's go ahead and pull up this article here from The Hill. More report, Biden urged to retaliate for U.S. Army deaths. So what happened? So three U.S. reservists were killed Sunday in a drone strike against a, against a U.S. base in Jordan. But President Biden's options are few to try to halt Iran's proxy forces without inflaming conflicts in the Middle East. Former President Trump and other Republicans say they blame Biden for the deaths of these three uh, reserve, um, Army Reserve soldiers from Georgia who died overnight Sunday when an explosive drone reached an American base along Syria's border. In election year, Republicans accused Biden of being weak on national security, dismissing his pledge to respond to Iranian-supported militia fighters in a, in a time and manner of our choosing. The possible U.S. Uh, retaliations run uh, the gamut of from unsatisfying to highly risky reports of the New York Times. Biden and his advisors for weeks have been on guard against potential U.S. casualties, aware of mounting odds and the administration's failed efforts to stop Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen, as well as thwart other foes in the region, some of whom are not controlled by Iran but exploit its support. Iran denies the role. So great. Another war. Isn't that fantastic? So let's talk about that hot mic moment now. Joy Reid from BSDNC, I mean MSNBC, take it away. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I heard something. Did you hear something? I, I, I don't think any of you heard that. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be professional here for Hard Lens Media. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Because ain't I a stinker? Quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> Still trying to kill the deal. Uh-huh. You know, you were you were caught. You were caught. Don't worry. Joy's gonna be fine. At BSD and C, don't you, don't you dare fire her. Don't you do that. Come on. This this probably brought in views like a hot mic moment. You, 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 you always got to be careful. You always got to be careful of those hot mic moments. Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> Stop. Still trying to kill the deal. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's talk about it because Mediate actually brought it up as well as uh, a few other uh, articles. But here, BSDNC, I mean MSNBC's Joy Reid unwittingly unloaded an F-bomb on a hot mic uh, during Monday's edition of The Readout. Oh, she read it out all right. At one point, Reid uh, uh, slammed congressional Republicans who opposed Joe Biden's legislative achievements, only to later take credit for the benefits their states and districts received. She then pivoted to immigration talks in the Senate. Case in point. Fixing what they say is a crisis at the border with congressional negotiators continuing work on a bipartisan deal to, do to tie border policy changes to funding Ukraine. They're also referring to talks that former President Donald Trump is trying to sabotage. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. Now, of course, 
Uh, there's this back and forth between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The host aired snippets of Biden's speech on Saturday in Columbia, South Carolina. As the clips aired, Reid seemingly spoke, uh, spoke seemingly unaware her mic was still on. Uh, and of course, we, we all saw Biden making a statement and which then Reid said, starting another effing war. Reid's mic was uh, cut and about a moment later, she was back on air. <laughs> later on the show, Reid apologized to viewers. Oh, you don't have nothing to apologize for. That was entertainment. That's good television. Before we go, I just want to apologize very quickly. She said, I was chatting during a clip that was playing. And, you know, we tried to keep this show very PG-13. Oh, really? Okay. So I just want to apologize to anyone who is listening to my behind-the-scenes chatter. I deeply, deeply apologize for that. By another effing war, Reed may have been referring to the increasing tensions in the Middle East, which have no doubt been exacerbated when three U.S. soldiers were killed in Jordan on Sunday by what the Pentagon said were Iranian proxies. Oh, Reed, you don't have to apologize. This was good television. Who doesn't love this? Who doesn't love this? And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, but hey, speaking of war, let's go right back to this. Biden weighs high stake response to Iran after U.S. troops killed in Jordan. So another war. So we got Ukraine. We got the crisis in Gaza. We got Yemen and now potentially Iran. You know, there, there, there's so much I'm pretty sure you at home and everybody else around the world wants to do. I mean, no one wants to see the nukes be a flying and the mushroom clouds be exploding in the sky. I mean, come on. Who wants to see that? No one wants to do the uh, uranium dance. Come on. No, no one. No one wants to be vaporized and ex out of existence. Trust me. Trust me, folks. There's so much better things we could do. Like, I don't know, finding a hobby, going on vacation. I know vacation in America. What is that? Do, do hang it out with the family or friends or hey, maybe even playing a video games or making yourself a nice succulent meal, something delicious and nutritious to eat. But hey, we got time for war. Our politicians, being the sociopaths that they are, are leading us down to this destructive path. So the killing of three uh, U.S. troops in Jordan by a drone strike carried out by the Iranian backed militia groups has added kindling to what is, is already a violent situation in the Middle East, increasing pressure on President Joe Biden to send a message to the leaders of Tehran. So. As we all know, unfortunately, three U.S. service members did die. Uh, Iran is saying that they did not do it. Um, but looks like, uh, you know, no matter what's going to happen, this administration is going to try and take action or do something to add more fuel to the fire. Going on to say, we do not seek another war. We do not seek to escalate, but we will absolutely do what is required to protect ourselves and respond uh, appropriately uh, to these attacks. A national security spokesperson John Kirby told reporters on Monday, Biden has pledged to respond to the uh, latest attacks in a time and manner of our choosing. Say it with me, folks, especially for the people in the back. What could possibly go wrong? But adding to that, I want to pull up this tweet here from Jimmy Dore, who retweeted this. There's no bigger warmongering sociopathic puppet of the military industrial complex than Joe Biden. Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Gaza, Iran and China are next. Voting for Biden is a vote for war and genocide and a vote against workers. Every uh, accusation he makes about Trump is a confession. America needs a real revolution. Hashtag genocide Joe. Whatever you do, don't tell this to AOC. She'll cry. So here. Biden warning in 2020 that Trump was so dangerous he was worried he would get us into a war with Iran. Now, this is from 2020, of course. Let's go and check it out. Thank you, Jimmy Dore, for retweeting this out. The world has changed because of what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. And it's you. It's you that's doing it. You, 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 you. Joe Biden, under your administration, we have entered into so many new conflicts. Now, Trump is no saint. I will not sit here and praise Donald Trump because I'm not a Republican voter and I'm not a Democrat voter. But in comparison, and I say this as somebody who is politically homeless at this point in time. This will probably be my last election cycle I will be voting in. And no, I won't be voting Democrat or Republican. I'll be voting independent, third party. That's that's my plan. 
And yes, my vote for a third party candidate is for a third party candidate, not for any other member of the two party system. But I want to make this very clear as someone who is who has to give commentary and analysis uh, to our current political uh, sphere. Everything that Joe Biden was screaming about and crying about in regards to Donald Trump is projection. Because under his administration, everything that he said that Trump was going to do, he has done. And it's more than just a war. It's the crumbling economy. It's our crumbling infrastructure. By the way, those kids are still in cages. There's a border crisis. There's a lot of uh, political and economic instability in this country. Now, do I think any president can save this situation? No, probably not. We are long overdue for a recession. And dare I say it, and I hate to say this, a depression. We've kicked the can down the road so many times that people like Joe Biden, not Trump. Trump played a role, but not a big one. But people like Joe Biden, who made politics their career and livelihood, helped build. That's right. This guy here is the architect of our neoliberal system, him and the other old politicians who are in their 80s and 90s. It's people like that that built this economic system. It's people like this person here, Joe Biden, who built it. Now, somebody like Trump, hey, they survived in it. They knew how to thrive off of it, but he is not the architect of it. And all this talk about how Trump was going to lead us into World War III. How many wars now are happening under Joe Biden? I mean, we got this proxy war in Ukraine right now between Ukraine and Russia. We're giving arms and ammunition to Ukraine. And one wrong move, let's say on the U.S. part. Uh, are we going to enter into a full-on conflict with Russia? Because last I checked, we have nukes, they have nukes. What could go wrong? Then, of course, there's this back-and-forth push between, oh, you guessed it, U.S. and China over Taiwan. What could possibly go wrong? And then we have the crisis in Gaza. The death toll keeps on rising. We also have uh, this crisis in Yemen. And now a potential crisis with Iran. I hate to start your morning off like this, but this president here, Joe Biden, and his administration are clueless in regards to what's going to happen. So when I hear somebody like Joy Reid, you know, blurting out like this, it's understandable because everyone's worried. Another effing war. Fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> yeah. Starting another one. And I think I have a theory on why she said that. Because even the media knows that this is extremely dangerous and reckless of what Biden and the Democrats are doing. They're not stupid. They know. They just, they're just given their role to act. And we know that MSNBC and CNN are part of that shield wall for the Democratic establishment. If this offends you, well, too bad, so sad. They're part of it. But they're people too, you know. They have feelings, I guess. But all the while, the rest of us here are struggling. Never forget Janet Yellen herself who said, the U.S. can afford two wars. Well, apparently we can afford three wars, four wars, five wars, six wars, seven wars, eight wars, nine wars, ten wars. Ah, why not? Let's just start the big one, World War III. I thought we were better than this. This election cycle, it's not going to be the most important. It will be the most interesting. But for the love of God, if there is to be a better future, these candidates better be talking about peace and ending these conflicts, too. Because one day, someday, some jagoff is going to see that shiny red button that says nuke. And they're going to wonder what that button does. And they'll be stupid enough to push it. Because our system, our politicians, are not bright people. And that's why it's up to us. We have to show the world that the American people are not subservient to our politicians. We want real change. We got to start speaking out. So starting another effing war. I'm tired of these wars. I can't re remember a time when we weren't in war anymore. That's how sad this is getting. I forgot what a peace looks like. What reason looks like. And that has to change for all of us now more than ever.